I am Ivana Desperge, and together with Nicolas Cardoza, we are going to present our work on using context-oriented programming, or COP, as a tool for realizing collective adaptive systems. So to start off, uh, in order to discuss engineering of collective adaptive, si collective adaptive systems, uh, we need to focus on engineering of what we consider to be two main components of every cast. Those are the individual components within the system, which can be subsystems themselves, uh, which have their own functionality, their own goals, and need to adapt their own behavior to their surrounding execution environment. So the first part in addressing engineering of CAS is, is addressing adaptivity or self-adaptivity of these individual components. And then the second part is managing the interactions between these individual components or subsystems uh, where these interactions can be either direct or indirect and uh, they can give rise to additional emergent behavior of the overall system which can be both desirable or undesirable behavior. So to break this down even further uh, we specify what does it take to engineer each of these two main components and as we later discuss the capabilities of context-oriented programming, we'll be tying them to one of these five questions. First four relate to engineering adaptivity of individual subsystems and the fifth one to managing the interactions. So first to address how do we define adaptations and how do we define them in a modular way. Third question asks, how do we plug these adaptations into, into the rest of the system? And the fourth is, how do we plug them into the rest of the system at the right time and in the right place? Meaning, how do we make sure they're timely and appropriate to the environment characteristics requiring adaptation? And the fifth one addresses, how do we manage interactions between individual adaptive systems? but especially if those interactions are not intentional, if they are just a result of multiple subparts adapting individually to their own individual requirements, but just happening to affect the same parts of the system or the same parts of the shared environment. To demonstrate our proposed way of building CAS, we use a concrete example of a city bus management system throughout the presentation. Uh, the system is composed of different individual subsystems, which are, in our case, bus routes that interact with each other. Uh, each bus route is further composed of individual buses, stations, and it has passengers, where stations and passengers may be shared with other bus routes. So on top of these interactions between individual parts, uh, all of these things interact with the environment. All of the routes are influenced by the traffic conditions and the states of, of the roads. So a lot of potential for interaction both between subsystem within a CAS and with the environment. Our objective uh, with TransCity is to build an adaptable system to manage all the situations that arise during execution uh, that might require transport managers intervention. So for example, uh, the examples we use in the presentation are if there's a road blockage, if the station is up to its full capacity and can't take any more passengers, or if bus is full up to the capacity and can't take any more passengers. To build a system, uh, we use context-oriented programming and in the rest of the presentation we illustrate how COP entities, tools and techniques are used to address the five questions that we discussed a few slides ago. So we start engineering CAS with the base system definition. In this case, we have the base definition for both the stations and buses. And as you can see here, we use regular uh, objects of the language, and in our particular case, regular JavaScript objects to define stations and, and buses. Note that here, stations, buses, and passengers are continuously executing their behavior independently from this, each other. Additionally to the definition of the system, we need to define which alerts will be in the system and the behavior we expect to see 
for each of those alerts. So if the uh, station is full, we want to close the station and divert passengers to the nearby stations according to their route. If the bus is full, we don't want to allow passengers on the bus and we want to send an additional bus to that particular route where the bus is full. And if there is a road, road blockage, then we want to split the routes in that road between the, the, the blockage and we additionally want to divert passengers across the blockage so that they can continue their journey. So the question here is, how do we actually define these adaptations and how we, do we make them in a modular way so that they can be easily reused and maintained? So if we focus on the full bus adaptation, we need to define three main entities. First, we need to define the context associated to the alert. In our case, this is a context object, which we call a full bus context. Then we need to define the behavior associated to that context, the behavior that the adaptation will uh, execute whenever the context is, is active. So in our case, we have the, uh, the full bus behavior where passengers cannot go on the bus and we send an additional bus to the current station where the full bus is. And finally, we need to couple the three actors in this interaction somehow. We do, it, we, we do this by adapting the full bus with the full bus context when, and we will observe the full bus behavior in this adaptation. Note here that all of these definitions are still regular JavaScript objects. So we don't, are not defining anything outside of the main programming language. Additionally, note that the first two definitions, the, the context object definition and the behavior associated to that context, they are defined as independent models from each other and from the application. This allows us to introduce these adaptations on the fly, which will give us more dynamicity in the system. And the last part, that adapt method that we're using, is the minimum connection we need to plug the adaptation. So, so to make sure that the adaptations do affect the application. So how do we exactly plug these adaptations? Well, first we need to we need to look at the adapt method. And in the adapt method, we can define how adaptations affect the system. So we can define define that they adapt a particular object instance, all instances of, of a class, or even a particular function in the system. This gives us the ability to define localized adaptations or global adaptations. In addition, note that multiple adaptations can be defined for a particular object. So in here, we can define the full bus adaptation to adapt the bus behavior or a road blocked adaptation to adapt the bus behavior as well. And these adaptations are completely independent from each other and they don't know each other or when do they happen. However, we can still compose adaptations by means of this proceed abstraction. And what will happen when we call proceed is that we can reuse the next available adaptation, whatever this adaptation may be. Think about these two adaptations, the adaptation for a road blockage and the adaptation for a full bus. Three things can happen when these adaptations happen uh, at the same time in the environment. So first, what happens if we see the full bus adaptation before the road blocked adaptation? Then the system will behave first with the full bus behavior and then will behave like the road block behavior, right? And in this particular case, since the uh, full bus behavior does not proceed, we will only see this behavior. What happens if we see first the road blocked context and then the full bus context? Then the system will behave first with the behavior associated to the road block and then with the behavior associated from the full bus proceeding from the behavior of the road block. However, developers can define the way in which adaptations are composed beforehand. And they can do this by means of these COP object policies, which simply state whatever the situation is, the way in which the adaptation should compose is the following. In this particular case, we say that first the uh, roadblock behavior will always be seen before than the full bus behavior. So, 
how do we make sure that these adaptations that we're defining and can introduce in the system are actually appropriate to the environment? So in context-oriented programming, what we do is that we can associate monitors to particular environment variables. And these are defined as part of the context discovery model here on the right of the slide. In this case, we have the example for the full bus where we are monitoring the capacity of the bus and we want to say that the bus is going to be full whenever the capacity is over 70%. And in this case, effectively, we activate that context. So what is happening here? The bus behavior is behaving with the base definition that we gave before, but whenever the bus capacity reaches 70%, we activate, we react to, to, to this variable by activating the full bus context and promptly install the adaptation, the behavior adaptation associated to that context, in which case the bus will start behaving with this new behavior. And whenever the bus stops uh, having a capacity over 70%, then we deactivate that context and the behavior of the system will revert back to the original behavior. Uh, so that covers the details of introducing adaptive behaviors into individual parts of a collective adaptive system. Now we need to talk about the techniques for managing the interactions between them. And for this, uh, we introduced two different techniques, uh, which you can use depending on whether the relationships or in type of interactions between different adaptations is known upfront, or it needs to be discovered at runtime. So the first technique is based on distributed context factory nets, uh, which is a runtime execution model for specifying predefined context dependency relations. And the second one uh, is based on reinforcement learning, which at runtime learns relationships between interacting entities and learns how to compose uh, their interacting behaviors. In distributed context pattern its model, each context is defined as a node. And here we have two, two such nodes. Uh, one is full bus and the other one is depot empty. Uh, now, normally when you have a full bus context active, that means that no more passengers can get onto that bus and you need to send out an extra bus to serve that route. Now, since depot is empty, there are no additional buses to be sent so that adaptation can't can't happen so the relationship between these two adaptations is defined as exclusion since they can't happen at the same time the patronage model we use uh, has currently nine such context dependency relations but it, it can be extended further as needed uh, managing uh, interactions in this model is realized by token game semantics of distributed context patronets, where tokens can communicate across the boundaries of their own nodes. Now, what happens if we don't know relationships between adaptations up front, if individual subsystems aren't even aware of each other up front, or even if they are, they're not aware of all the adaptations each can take, we have to figure out how to manage these interactions at runtime. So to enable that, in our work published just earlier this year in Seams, we proposed a reinforcement learning based approach, which at runtime learns whether adaptations are independent, uh, meaning they can be executed simultaneously in the system without affecting each other at all, whether they're compatible or whether they're conflicting. And then based on that, we pick the best way to manage these interactions, meaning the best way to either compose them or to execute only a single one. So for example, for independent and compatible adaptations, both can safely proceed to affect the same parts of the system without causing errors. While in the case of conflicting one, only one should proceed, but we also need to learn then which one. Uh, and we do that based on learning the importance of each or impact that each has on the overall system performance. So to go back to our original five questions, we set out to answer on how to engineer uh, collective adaptive systems using context-oriented programming. 
we talked about the following. So we talked about how context and adaptations are presented as first class entities in COP to enable specification of modular adaptations. We talked about how these adaptations are composed into the system at runtime. We talked about how context and associated adaptations are activated and deactivated uh, in order to respond to context changes in the environment. And we talked about managing interactions between subparts of a CAS based on whether we know upfront what relationships between adaptations are or whether we need to learn and discover it at runtime. So that concludes our talk, but uh, please do get in touch if you would like to chat further about anything in this presentation. Thank you very much for watching.